Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is out. The Spengler family are back, this time having to potentially face an ancient evil force that is unleashed when a, an artifact appears at a second-hand store. I mean, that's, that's the plot in basic detail, but it's a kind of big story that gathers together the early Ghostbusters cast and it brings in some fresh faces too. And Russ, it kind of becomes this big, nostalgic, fun family film in some respects, but I hesitate to call it a family film because there are ghosts and nasty elements in this movie as well. You know what, I, I think probably we'll, we'll start this off. There might be a few spoilers. We'll try and keep away from major spoilers or major twists, but there will be a few things because it's kind of hard not to when you're kind of looking at this. What do you think some of the big standout elements were of this story this time around? given that it is trying to combine some of the nostalgia with some more modern ideas. Like, what were your takeaways from what they decided to do with that? What they do, they've done different than Afterlife. So the, the last film that just came out a few years ago was really kind of introduced a whole new group of characters, even though it kind of alluded to the past and looking to the Ectomobile and all this sort of thing out in the middle of Oklahoma. This one really brings us back to kind of the heart of it. And so we're seeing the nostalgia, all of the original characters, well, most of the original characters, unfortunately, Harold Ramis is no longer with us, but um, in spirit, right? They're brought back in and they're a part of it, along with uh, Paul Rudd and his his family or pseudo family, as they kind of all move back in. So I think the nostalgia element was really good. But then on top of it, I don't know about you, but there's a couple characters that I really enjoyed. I wish they actually had it kind of teased out a little bit more. So I like Kamal Najani. He added kind of a nice new humor to this whole storyline and kind of what we're able to do. And then also the Pat Oswald character that's stuck in the bottom of the New York City Library was hilarious. So I thought that there were some really great takes on humor and nostalgia, but boy, whew, there is a lot going on in this film. I don't know about you, but what were some of your favorite bits and or maybe yeah. were there any struggles at all? There definitely is a lot going on. I think you're right, but I kind of enjoyed that about this because for me, it brought together as a whole, all of these different elements and these different characters with their stories that I felt made it stronger as as a whole. It, to me, it didn't oh, okay. detract because for Paul Rudd and the course Fengler family, they've got this narrative going on about how they now become a closer family unit. You know, Paul Rudd's character, he was the science teacher to these kids and he's now there as their, he called himself their step, what was it, their step teacher? Like step, step teacher. dad, <laughs> step dad, but kind of working out what his role is in that. And it's very classic Paul Rudd because he does the nervous, bumbly, uncool, but kind of cool dad role very well. And when he's gonna deliver a corny line that throws back to some of the early Ghostbusters uh, films, he does it well. You, you accept it from him, whereas I think maybe you wouldn't from some other characters. But what they've got going on as a unit is really working out what is that new dynamic between he and the and his wife, you know, as, as a new couple and like forging a new dynamic within that family. And for the young daughter who is 15, right? Like she's in a new uh, space within her own adolescence where she's trying to find out where she fits. She's the scientific mind behind so much of the innovation right. within the Ghostbusters yep. team. And yet she gets sidelined because of her age and because of, you know, the, the dangers that are involved with being a Ghostbuster. And so I kind of like the stories that were all collected together even in within their unit of what does it look like to become a you know good stepdad how do you navigate the changing stages within adolescence and when you feel like you've got so much to contribute but you're being pushed to the side and it also champions the whole space of young girls in these kind of fields of science mm, and mathematics and everything that's going on and then like you said you've got Kamal Nanjani as the fire master loved that because he has his own backstory, a relationship with his grandma and him right, learning right, right. to manage the powers of fire. Like there's so many different elements within this movie that I thought always gave you something to look at, to enjoy, to have a bit of fun with, and also to think a little more deeply about too. Interestingly enough, I felt that it felt like the copy machine experience. It was like, you know, a copy of the copy of the copy of the copy, which I felt like it, the original, they're just trying to stretch this out so much that it was good and nostalgic, but I don't know if it necessarily had the same magic to it that the original did. It was kind of a ghost of its original um, life, I guess it was. <laughs> and it, and so, in so many ways, I, I thought it was good, and I think the fans of this series will enjoy this movie, and also, because that's what I really heard in the audience, was the laughs really came when the nostalgic bits occurred. But I do kind of struggle, this film didn't, I, I didn't like it as much as the Afterlife film, I have to tell you, the first, the last one, or the first film in the whole franchise. But I think it's probably one that the fans are going to love. Mm. 
and really enjoy kind of the nostalgic elements to it. I, I, I'd love to have actually more Paul Rudd, honestly, and I want more steak puff marshmallow men. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yes, I'm kind of curious. So um, would you jump into the Ecnomobile again? I mean, Ooh. is this one going to be on your watch list or not? Yeah, most important question of the show. I think <laughs> I I was honestly surprised how much I enjoyed it and thought it, thought it oh, was good. a bit of fun. You know, I was ready for this movie to be terrible because, as you said earlier, <laughs> they, re they really are trying to stretch out the sure. life of an original franchise and how far you can go with that i mean that is the question could there be another one i don't know because they, they can't keep banking on the nostalgia to keep us watching the next one right like you can only go hey look at these people on screen that you haven't seen in 20 years except that you have because they did it in the last one as well <laughs> exactly. right like you can't bank on cameos making these movies right. uh appealing but I, I still think there is a place for what these movies do, so maybe there could be another one. But I genuinely, I was surprised, and so I would say Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I would have it on my watch list, but with the caveat that we've already said a few times in this, it is not for younger audiences. I would say it's for like older mm. teens and absolute fans of the franchise. I think you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, I, I mean, it definitely because I was torn on this one because I, I really, I really enjoyed uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. This one, not as much. I just felt like they were trying to do too much and bringing everything to kind of get together but it did offer something that was entertaining a good value for families of older of older children and then on top of it the conversation points for me really won me over i mean i'm just looking i'm going wow we could really get into some great discussions on film and faith through this whole thing so that puts it on the watch list kind of tentatively if it were and i i'd say i'd still give ghostbusters a call again if if i wanted to so it'd be good Look at you go, using using the puns as much as you can, Russ. Thank you uh, for joining us, everybody. You can, of course, subscribe to the watch list wherever you're listening. You can catch video versions of these conversations on the Hope 103.2 YouTube channel. So don't forget to rate, review this podcast, share it with a friend, and we'll see you next time. Russ, see you later. All right. We ain't afraid of no ghosts. See you next time.